Greetings, everyone. I invite you into the future's consciousness that belongs to all living things. My name is Frank Spencer, and welcome to the second Meditations and Transformations. I want to start off, as I did with my last meditations, by reading you briefly what we mean by transformation. Transformation is the evolutionary pathway of all living things. Transformational futuring is the expansion of consciousness through anticipatory imagination across and beyond time, space, and experience that reveals emerging novelty and realities. And transformational development is the application of transformational mindsets and pathways among communities and ecosystems that results in environments of empathy, care, love, and wholeness. Our meditation today is going to be a two-parter. The first comes from the book Reflections on Evolutionary Activism by Tom Attlee. And I wrote this in a post earlier today, and so I wanted to add this to the meditation that I already had planned because I think it's a very powerful way to get across this idea of what it means to step into wholeness in terms of futures consciousness. So Tom writes in his book, in a chapter on reflections of evolutionary activism, that it would be a tragedy, he says, to waste this opportunity by clinging to business as usual, just because it's familiar. That would mean that evolution would have to try waking up through robots or perhaps through raccoons with intelligence, opposable thumbs, a lot of complex garbage left behind by a nearly wise species that almost made it. It's much more thrilling to awaken and tackle the job of conscious evolution with everything we've got and pull off one of the greatest miracles in the history of the universe. So then he goes on to say, to pull it off, we need to focus on three interrelated evolutionary dynamics, which if we apply them wisely at all levels of our existence, to our lives, to our cultures, to the systems that we live in, to our knowledge, and yes, to our technologies, we will generate the world we want and transform ourselves into who we most want to be. These three basic profoundly useful evolutionary insights are number one, interacting diversity that generates change. We're going to be talking about that in future meditations as we look deeper into holoptic foresight dynamics, but you can read about holoptic foresight dynamics now if you go to the TFS, TFSX website, excuse me, and look up holoptic or to the TFSX Medium page and look up Holoptic Foresight Dynamics. You can read all about it. Number two is an alignment with reality as it generates survival. And number three is harmonizing the self-interest of the parts with the well-being of the whole that sustains vibrantly evolving complexity. And this is why we consider evolution, uh, biological, um, psychological, as sacred evolutionary dynamics to be key to futures consciousness, to good futuring, to deep futuring, and to our foresight that really leads us into transformative change. So lastly, Tom says, we can expand each of these deceptively simple principles into dozens of related guidelines and to programs and to ways of living and organizing society. This is exactly what we strive to do through transformations as we gather together. And I'm going to talk about briefly, of course, in every one of these meditations. Uh, they constitute a three-part formula for promoting evolutionary fitness for humanity from our personal lives to our global civilization. And then he says, underlying them all is a deep spiritual reality. All the dramatic bustle of evolution is actually wholeness transforming itself into new forms of wholeness. I believe that as we apply these three very practical evolutionary dynamics to ourselves and our world, we will come or we will become increasingly aware of this metaphysical truth. 
we will come to notice that this is what is going on in every moment and in every thought, every response. And then as we gradually and thoroughly wake up to ourselves and our world as wholeness transforming itself, we will simply become evolution itself, seamlessly and joyously unfolding. We will have arrived home to the role for which we were made and thereby becoming whole. So I think that this concept of becoming whole that Attlee talks about here is also very much reflected in um, something that I read uh, from one of my favorite philosophers, Benita Roy, um, on her recent substack, The Pop-Up School. And she actually lays out six principles for what we must adequately do or what must adequate spirituality actually look like to help us to understand greater about this wholeness. And so here's the six things she says. One, we must feel whole. We must not split the self into separate parts. The self um, must be an experiential nexus. The body and mind being one whole, not fragmented, and that people and nature are one continuous whole is something we must realize, not separated in time or space. Number two, the self is a causal agent in the co-creation of reality and hence it matters what kind of self one cultivates. Number three, we must learn how to close the gap between what is and what ought to be. Hmm. Number four, we enable us to move from an egocentric to an allocentric mode of perception and cognition and awareness. These things are the basis of holotic foresight dynamics, and it's what you'll learn all about at Transformations Retreat, which is about 50 weeks from now. Uh, number five, appreciate the mysterious origins of the cosmos and the irreducibility of the other. Hmm. And last but not least, develop a deep intuition of the non-duality of life and death. And so I hope that this meditation has helped you to see what it means for us to dive into that unique whole that forms through the integration of the diverse parts, understanding their place in the unique whole and thereby coming to a cooperative evolutionary trait that perceives the emergence or perceives what wants to emerge fostering the co-creation of transformational realities. I'll see you on our next Meditations in Transformations.